Hey folks, imagine this, this woman likes to collect different animals, but what she didn't expect was to become one herself, as this is the movie Sick Girl. So get ready, let's recap. Ida is a regular woman, or almost one, as she loves having pets. The problem is that she collected insects, and she receives a message from a girl who was about to go out with her. However, the girl cancels because she gets shivers from insects and didn't want to visit Ida's house. Once again, her love life is ruined, and she's left with only insects for company, which explains a lot. Heading to work, she notices a young woman sitting and drawing. She has a mischievous thought but lacks the courage to strike up a conversation. This is where we see her job, she researches insects, and her friend Mike starts saying that's why she can't find anyone. First, because she's eccentric, and second, because her house is full of insects, scaring people away. Ida ponders this because both options are challenging. When they're heading down for lunch, the young woman is still there. Mike tells her to approach, and Ida gets nervous. He playfully pushes her into the elevator, so she has no choice. The young woman introduces herself, complimenting Ida and expressing interest in grabbing coffee. Ida becomes even more nervous because she didn't expect this and everything is going too well. But until now, she hasn't seen the young woman's face. When they're about to set a date, a spider appears on her clothes. She squashes it and, to avoid ruining the mood, decides to run away. However, in the elevator, she catches a glimpse of her face, and seriously, even I would be interested in someone like her. Nervous, Ida returns home not knowing what to do. There's a mysterious box in front of her door with a unique insect inside. The building owner calls her to talk, saying she only allowed common pets like dogs or cats, not weird stuff like insects, when she rented to her. Ida awkwardly defends herself, saying they don't make a mess or noise, so there's no reason to complain. Back inside, she examines what she received, a very distinct insect. She calls Mike to understand where the problem came from, but he's already asleep. She starts baby talking to the insects, seriously, nobody deserves that, and says that this creature is different and came from Brazil. And folks, if that thing came from here, I wouldn't want to stay because it's bigger than a dog. As she goes to sleep, she can't stop thinking about the mysterious redhead. The next day, before leaving, she places a magazine on top of the container of the new insect because it was very skittish. Arriving at work, she gathers the courage to talk to the young woman and invites her to dinner, considering that coffee had become a bit cliché. The young woman accepts, and later, Ida chats with Mike at a Chinese restaurant, excitedly telling him about the successful arrangement. However, during the meal, she finds a cockroach in her food. Instead of being disgusted, she starts analyzing it, causing other customers to leave. The big evening arrives, and both are nervous. Strangely, they start getting along well. Misty reveals that she accepted the invitation because she had already looked at Ida and liked drawing her. They exchange mischievous glances, and Misty boldly suggests watching a movie together. However, Ida starts to worry about the insects in her house, but since this kind of connection doesn't come around often, she decides to overlook the potential issue. Back at the building, the nosy neighbor looks on and asks who the young woman is. Ida says she's just a friend visiting. At Ida's place, Misty asks to see her room, but Ida claims it's a bit messy because it's where she keeps her insects. They have a drink to break the ice and start talking about life. Misty is a bit peculiar, but that's okay, as Ida is too. Misty takes off her coat to get more comfortable, and they watch a unique movie. Just as they're about to get closer for a kiss, Mike calls, asking about the date. Ida is flustered and says she didn't expect things to go so smoothly and doesn't know what to do. Mike jokes about it being time for some Velcro action and says he's going to the bathroom, leaving Ida even more nervous. She goes to her room to grab a pillow but doesn't know that the distinct insect had a snack with the neighbor's dog and was hiding there. Ida says it's getting late, and Misty thinks she's being asked to leave. However, Ida clarifies that she wants Misty to stay, and things start heating up. Misty suggests changing into pajamas, but instead, she takes everything off right there. They start fooling around, but Ida feels a sting, and Misty thinks maybe she had a dislike toy. Despite this, they decide to continue. The playfulness carries into the night. The issue is that the next morning, when Ida wakes up, Misty is in her room, 
looking at her insects. Ida worries that it might not end well, but she finds out that Misty also likes them. The two of them continue to get along well. Ida asks for Misty's help in finding the missing new insect, and they search the house as if they've known each other for a long time. It all feels too good to be true. However, Misty starts feeling unwell, as if she caught a cold. She asks to lie down on Ida's pillow. Ida says it's fine, but she needs to go to work. Most people wouldn't let someone they just met stay in their house. At work, she draws a picture of the insect and shows it to Mike, but he had never seen anything like it before. They needed to find the insect for further studies, and this is where we see how things can go wrong. After a week, the two of them decide to move in together, and Misty doesn't want to leave the apartment. The nosy neighbor starts observing and doesn't want her granddaughter to see what the two of them are doing. Things start getting strange as Misty develops a craving for insects. One day, while tidying up the room, she notices something odd about the pillow she usually sleeps on. There's something inside. She tries to call Ida, but the insect makes a noise, leaving her paralyzed. She lies down on the bed, and the creature starts playing with her. This is when we see that everything is already going very wrong, as her ear starts to swell. At work, Ida discovers what that insect is. A Brazilian researcher sent it to her to try to find out more about it. At first, she realizes that it's a very dangerous parasite with a potent venom. When it enters its victims, it turns them into slaves. After this discovery, the landlord appears and wants them both out by the end of the week. However, Misty is still being quite carefree and doesn't care about anything. At home, Ida starts crying because she doesn't want this to happen. Misty, on the other hand, is immobilized, as if nothing had occurred. Suddenly, she becomes angry, and a gooey substance starts coming out of her ear. She faints, and when she wakes up in the evening, she's already behaving differently. She doesn't want to be in the light and decides to call Mike, because she knows that the insect has done something to her, and she urgently needs help. She goes to his house, and he tells her that he figured out what that creature does. It replaces a person's blood with a strange toxin and automatically multiplies within the species. She realizes that she shouldn't have left her alone at home. The nosy old neighbor visits to see if they were still playing around, and Misty appears looking very strange. Suddenly, several creatures emerge from her face, and the old lady falls down the stairs in fear. Ida returns home and finds the place full of police, because Misty had died. However, Misty claims not to know what happened, stating she found her collapsed and deceased. But Ida senses something is off since Misty only wanted to stay in the dark and hot water. Taking advantage of being alone, Ida checks the room and finds the creature's cocoon inside the pillow. Misty appears nervously and begins to transform. Unfortunately, there always has to be a sucker, and Mike arrives, warning that it's dangerous to stay there. However, Misty lunges at him, leading to both of them becoming pregnant in the living room, with the insect extending its leg toward them. And folks, what a bizarre movie this was. The insect gets more people than you can imagine. So, leave a like and subscribe if you want to experience the insect's touch, because we already have the expression on our faces. Now I'm out, as we've already started the day in a different way. I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known Don't know where it goes, but it's home to me and I